Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Miked Up Sports, the show that goes in depth with the people who build our sports community. And we have featured a lot of athletes in our four years doing this program. And some we have brought back to follow up on their initial visit. And our guest is one of them, Elena Contreras, who just finished up her junior college season. And correct me if I'm saying it wrong, is it Cochise? Yeah, Cochise. Cochise. I got it right in the first try. But she had a successful season at Cochise and was able to turn that into a spot on a Division I roster at Missouri-Kansas City, UMKC, better known as the Ruse. And for Elena, hopefully it represents the culmination of an arduous journey So, Elena, thanks for coming back. I know the last time we had you on, you were part of that group with Hopkins. And, well, all of them have become pretty notable athletes now with Nunu going to Stanford. I remember Salam Maher, she finished up at St. Louis Park, but playing at Smith. And I would see you go to her games, even though she wore different colors. And Amaya's at Minnesota. You Hopkins kids have a way of... Going all over the place when it comes to college hoops. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's something we're pretty privileged to do, so we're grateful. <laughs> well, speaking of privileges, I guess you, not to say you didn't earn one, but the last time I had you on, it was before your junior season, but that was the year of pandemic protocols, so not a lot of people could attend your games. Mm-hmm. I got back during the AAU season, but... It was in the middle of that season where you had a life-changing event, so to speak. Yeah. As I understand it, you suffered an ACL tear and couldn't play your senior year as a result. Hopkins won the title, but you had to watch from the sidelines. So, Elena, since the last time we had you on, if you don't mind starting there, because I feel that's where the next leg of this journey began... Coming off that state tournament run, you reached the semifinals and you're off to a great start in AAU. I remember watching a few of your games with the Metro Stars and then to have a proverbial truck hit you like that. What do you remember from that summer and all the highs, lows and everything in between that came with it? Um, I mean, as you said, like I was playing fairly well, so I was kind of betting on the, the next upcoming tournament because it would be um, a viewing period. So I had interest going into that, but they wanted to see me play in person because of the COVID year and stuff. So that was uh, obviously taken away and I didn't get to play the rest of my AU career. Um, I mean, that was pretty sad because I feel like I made a lot of memories with teammates and friends over AU and obviously that would be big for uh, where I would go next for college. But, um, yeah, that was pretty rough. I think it gave me more of an appreciation for the game, though, because I think at times I would take it for granted. And uh, it showed me, like, how close people were uh, to me in terms of, like, a community because, like, who I go for strength and conditioning, he was, he drove to my house and gave me, like, things to help for uh, surgery and, seeing all friends and family bring gifts and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Who is the trainer you're talking about, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, His name is Ted Johnson at Performance Athletics. Okay, and I asked because I know there's a few of them out there, and a few of your teammates have shared videos of the training sessions they have done, including Nunu. So I'm just curious, and I think, you know, hey, he played a part in your return, so... like to give him a plug too, just in yeah, case anyone sure. else uh, might go through what you did. Yeah. Uh, so it was almost a double whammy because you get hurt during a viewing period. And I think that was right around the time when coaches could start scouting in person again. Yeah. And then I presume when you found out what the injury was, the realization that not only could you not finish out the AAU season? You had to be a spectator during the high school season. So while everyone else was doing their thing, and it was a strong year for Hopkins, they won state, yeah. but 
you had to play more of a sideline role because you couldn't get back in there. How tough was that having to face that reality? Yeah, that was really hard. Um, obviously, like the teammates I had been playing with, I had been playing with almost like all my career. So not being able to play with them was uh, was pretty hard. And then I remember having to leave school right away and uh, going to um, PT and then coming back and finishing practice just to be with them and try and act, like get as much as a senior as I could. That was pretty hard, but uh, I mean, I had fun supporting them, of course, and them including me as much as they could. And uh, yeah, I remember one day uh, after PT, uh, it was right before the section finals game, I think, and I remember just breaking down because I was like, I mean, that was, that was pretty much it, but I was uh, happy to be a part of what they had made that year and all the success. You mentioned some of the aspects that recovery year brought to you that maybe enlightened your perspective in ways that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Not that I'm saying the injury was a good thing. I never right. want to see players hurt. You, you want to see them win, lose, or draw, settle everything on the court. What do you think helped you come to terms with the recovery process, some of the other elements that helped your perspective because I'll get to it in a moment, but I want to get your thoughts first, but there was something you said that really struck a chord with me as yeah. you were continuing your recovery. Um, yeah. I mean, being hurt, I got to like watch the game and like, I feel like I learned more from that, but also like as far as taking it for granted, like when you, I mean, I've been playing the sport for all I can remember. So when you've been doing something for that long, it's easy to just like get into like, like you're driving to work one day and you don't really realize that you're doing it. It just kind of, it's like that. And yeah, I would feel like when it was taken away, it was, it was a hard hit. You also spoke of your trainer and then your teammates what kind of things, what kind of activities or gestures did they offer you that helped you through it? Because that was one of the things you touched on right away yeah. when you were talking about, well, I can't play, but I still got to enjoy something out of it. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, they would, they would come over and take me, uh, when, come watch movies or something, or they would come and get me out of bed. And uh, I was on crutches, so they would always like, they would walk slower for me and we always give each other a hard time, but, uh, yeah, that, that helped for sure. And one of the insights or observations you made, this is what I was getting at because over the years I've gotten to know you, your fellow teammates at Hopkins who are D one themselves, yeah. uh, parents. So I've gotten to know your dad. He and I text a lot during the season with all the ways we're involved, but he shared a story about how upset he was knowing that you couldn't play. And he went as far as to say he was thinking about leaving the sport altogether because he, he was bummed. I, well, right. you were there, you probably <laughs> saw it firsthand, but he was bummed that all the time and investment uh, wouldn't result in getting that proper send off uh, like a Maya battle or Maya Naji did as seniors. But he shared something you told him that helped him gain a better understanding of the situation. And I think it was something along the lines of these things happen. No one was at fault. It was just something where I think a lot of athletes know there is a risk that comes with playing sports. Yeah. What do you think helped you with that perspective? What do you remember from that conversation? And what do you remember when you relayed that nugget of wisdom? Because I really think that's uh, right. what you said is helpful, not just for you and your dad and your family, but for any other athlete out there who might be going through 
what you did. They go through all the emotional roller coasters that come with it that, yeah, something happened and it sucked, but it wasn't your fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. Yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously that was pretty hard for me to come with, come to terms with uh, for myself. But I mean, at that point, there wasn't really anything I could do, but just, I mean, put my head down and just keep working and uh, go to PT every day and stuff like that. So, I mean, that helped me. And uh, telling him that would, we supported each other. And the two of you, I would see you all the time at games. Your dad would usually ref, and you would play in the AAU season. Of course, now he's coaching at yeah. Irondale. But was there anything you learned about the relationship you and your father had? Did, was there anything new that you might have picked up on? You were pretty close, I presume, beforehand. But having to go through that journey together, what kind of imprint did that leave on the two of you? Um. I would say uh, my dad and I, uh, I mean, we tell each other, like, we love you and stuff like that. But as far as, like, emotions, it's more of a tough love type of relationship. <laughs> so uh, seeing him, like, really support me and, and show more emotions showed, like, how much he cared for that, for me, and that mattered a lot. And for you, you like you said, at some point you had to put your head down, go through PT and endure all the things you probably didn't want to do, but knew you had to do if you wanted to get back in playing condition. When did you come to terms with that? You talked about the initial disappointment of finding out I'm not going to be able to play AAU and I'm not going to be able to play my senior year. When did that turn into, all right, how do we, overcome this challenge if you know what I mean um I wouldn't say it was a set point I think it was more of a gradual thing and like I would say more when I was being able to do more things in PT like jumping and running I feel like that helped more I mean I mean sometimes looking back it still hurts that I didn't get to play like my last state championship but I would say it was more gradual as you noted at the start your injury occurred during a viewing period. And there were plenty of highlights that you put together in your prior years as a player, but how did that impact the recruiting process with regards to who was taking a look, what your decisions were, knowing you weren't going to be able to update that highlight reel and right. have to wait until next winter to really get out there again. How did that influence the recruiting process and your decision to go all the way out to a junior college in Arizona? Yeah, um, I mean, as I said before, like I had interest, but they didn't get to see me play in person. So the calls kind of just stopped coming. And then um, obviously we reached out to you to help with the highlight reel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, that helped a lot. So we, uh, I have, well, we have a mutual friend, isn't it? He goes by Sticks, and uh, he has a lot of connections across, like the country. So uh, he gave one of the assistant coaches at Cochise, like my contact info and stuff like that, and it just took off from there. And I just want to explain to anyone watching: there is no script here. I did not tell I did not tell Elena to give me a plug for <laughs> highlight reels. I do produce them, but no, this is not a series to prop me up. This is a series to highlight yourself. <laughs> I don't mind the shout out though. So yeah. thank you for that. <laughs> so what led you to coaches? Were there other schools that were taking a look at you? And what do you remember looking back at your year playing junior college basketball? Um, yeah. Coaches was really the only option I could have walked on at uh, Wisconsin, but I feel like coaches would, uh, would have been better for me. Uh, looking back, I think that was probably the best decision I made. I think the coaches really, really care about the kids as people and development. And I think that was probably the right speed for me to come back into, especially off an injury. So, yeah, I think that helped a lot. What do you remember 
in terms of emotions, feelings, all of that, when you flew out to Cochise in Arizona, I think they're based in the Phoenix area. Where are uh, they exactly? Douglas, south Douglas, of Phoenix. South of Phoenix. Okay. I'm still learning about all the D1 schools. You throw in the junior colleges in the mix. <laughs> I have a lot of geography lessons to catch up on. But when you were cleared to play, I know you were able to take up track and for a first time or with practically no experience to understand it, you did quite well. But I have to imagine you felt a little bit more at ease or at peace when you were able to suit up and take the court again. What do you remember from the first time you were able to put on that jersey, go out there and play your first game since the injury? Um, I mean, obviously I was pretty excited, pretty ecstatic. Um, it had been like at that point over a year since I had played. So that was really fun. Uh, I also remember, uh, I mean, it was a little, definitely a little rocky at start. Uh, junior college is pretty, pretty physical and Obviously, after an injury, that was that was pretty difficult to come back into. But I think uh, over the year, it got better, and my confidence built up a lot more than what it had ever been. And I presume you still had that three-point form down pat, right? <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> That's what I remember from covering you at Hopkins. Uh, like, oh, Elena, she's the three-point sharpshooter. <laughs> yeah. Keep an eye out on her. You mentioned the junior college level being at the right speed for you. And I've interviewed a lot of athletes who started there and used it to find places to play at division one. And I covered a tournament at Anoka Ramsey. I do think it is a great way to build up the ground game, build up credentials. Maybe it doesn't get the glory that the NCAA games, the NCAA division one events do, but for a lot of athletes, it serves as a pathway. So what did you learn about yourself, about the game, playing a year of junior college basketball? Um, I think that I, I definitely learned I didn't give myself enough credit for the abilities that I had in the past. So uh, gaining more confidence and doing more things than just shooting the three. <laughs> Yeah. I knew you could shoot more than three, yeah. do more than that. It was just, that's what I remember from you. That's yeah. all. No, no, I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I so what like... other tricks do you have up your sleeve then now? <laughs> um, I want to get this out there. It's right. like, Hey, this kid can do more than shoot threes. <laughs> uh, I think I, I developed more as a three level score. So more mid ranges and getting to the basket more. So long story short, those one-on-ones, if you still have them with your dad, uh, you would have an even bigger advantage now, right? Definitely, yeah. (laughs) He probably doesn't want to play you anymore, right? No, he won't even do it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be in so much trouble. (laughs) Now, I did jump on you a little bit. So what did you learn about yourself? You mentioned having more abilities, but what was that process, that experience like playing at that level and working alongside and going up against fellow athletes who all have the same ambition as you do. Right. Yeah, that was, uh, Juco is definitely different than, uh, any other thing that, or league that I've played in. Um, obviously like you only have two years there, so all the kids are fighting for the same thing that you are. And I think that just, uh, probably made me, uh, work even harder to try and beat them out. Well, hard work is something that I would never dispute about you, Elena, and I would like to think that work you put in to enhance your scoring capabilities had some role or influence, some impact on your season, because I understand you got to play in the National Junior College Tournament. You won your region, and remind me how far you got in the NJCAA Tournament? Uh, we, we lost second round. Second round. Yeah. Well, that's a lot farther than I ever would have made it. So <laughs> I think Rochester, well, they won in D3. That's a different story. But see what I mean when it comes to JUCO? Right. I'm still <laughs> learning about stuff. But how cool was it to win the region, get a chance to play in the national tournament? I understand you even got to run into some old faces that you hadn't seen in a long time because another friend of mine or a couple of them played at Moberly who also made the tournament. 
one of your teammates actually, KK, yep. and then um, an old friend of the program and Daria Douglas came from that team. But to experience that, you of course had a lot of practice with state tournaments, but what was unique and what was fun about getting that opportunity again at the division one juco level yeah that was that was really fun uh being able to see kk there obviously that was that was pretty cool i haven't seen her in in, in a couple of years so us being on the same stage was was pretty cool to share and uh yeah i think just being on that stage again as far as having that many coaches and that many people in the stands that was pretty cool to have again yeah it was it was almost like a old au days but more serious so that was really fun I have to ask, did you and KK have a chance to catch up? Any little smack talk between the two of you? <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, I seen her in the stands at, at a couple of my games, but I, we didn't get to catch up a lot. That's all right. I'm sure you'll have your chance, and you probably have numbers and text, all of that. You'll get yeah. your chance because I know she's going for the same thing that you are after finishing up her season at Moberly. Of course, we get to see the... Division One tournament. Every game is televised on ESPN. With junior college, it's a little different. There are some outlets that will broadcast it, but it maybe not doesn't get the same pizzazz. What what was that like going into that tournament? And what do you remember most fondly about it? Having a chance to look back and reflect on the season that played a big part in your return. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I had uh, two pretty good games at Nationals, and I think being able to see what uh, all that I was capable of was, is pretty, um, is fun to see, I look, to look at what I can build on and, and how much I can do. And yeah, as you mentioned, like, obviously, Juco isn't really streamed everywhere, and that was pretty hard because uh, <laughs> uh, I would, I'm always used to having my family in the stands, so uh not having as much support i wouldn't say hard but it was pretty different and you reminded me of something and i think a lot of athletes go through this well you'll be doing it again because you'll be heading outside although you'll be a little closer to home than arizona but how tough was that adjustment having to go all the way to a junior college you know you're going to be there at most two years but you're also two time zones away, so your family yeah. and friends, the people who supported you, maybe can't be there physically as much as they were in your Hopkins days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was pretty different. Uh, my dad, actually, he made it to quite a few games, so that was, that was cool to see him in the stands. And uh, My mom and my grandma would come to the games in Phoenix and stuff like that, but most of my family didn't get to come, so that was quite an adjustment but uh they would still get to watch um on the streams and text me so that it was still something you were talking about the lack of streaming options compared to d1 elena like you and your dad you should have utilized some of those connections i would have come down and called those yeah. games if that's what you're <laughs> if you were looking for that like i'd do it yeah considering this season i will say you you made the right decision in one sense. You missed out on the third snowiest winter we've ever had. Really? You didn't hear about that? No, I, I didn't know it was that much. But Oh, I suppose you saw photos, but you probably, yeah. well, you, you're in Arizona. You don't need to keep track of the amounts. <laughs> uh, it was snowy. In fact, I uh, even joked about looking out and missing the blizzard when I was in Dallas for that all-star right. game. <laughs> Like, oh, I had 84 degrees, sunny skies. Actually, your dad and I even uh, talked about that. And uh, like, yeah, I I could go for 84 and sunny right. <laughs> compared to what everyone else is going through. <laughs> of course, being in junior college, again, I've had fellow athletes who went the same route you did. KK actually played at a couple of those JUCOs. Mm-hmm. NJ Weems went to Moberly before going to Lamar. Olivia Antilla years ago went to Anoka Ramsey and ended up at Florida A&M. So it can and has been done, but not only are you still playing, Avant Tensai, how could I forget about her? She did the same thing. But compared to other athletes who are there, and I know the transfer portal, I guess, maybe 
brings a similarity to it, but not only are you trying to play your butt off and do the best you can for coaches, and you did getting a region championship and a tournament appearance out of it, but you're also still open in terms of the recruiting process. So you're, you're still out there. How many offers did you get during the season after the season? And what do you think that did for your competence, knowing that even though you had a year and a half long layoff in the eyes of coaches and scouts out there, they still thought you brought enough value to reach out to you. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty big because uh, I think over the season at one point, I think I not lost hope, but uh, got a little less hopeful as far as uh, recruiting and stuff like that. So I kind of just got in the mindset that I would be coming back for another year. But I think after nationals, uh, that's where things pretty really took off. And yeah, uh, it, it's it's helpful to see how much you can do in just one season. How many offers did you receive and what led you to make your way down to Kansas City yeah. at UMKC? Um, I think I had a, about four or five offers. And uh, I think I chose UMKC because uh, I think the the coaches, the relationship with the coaches I had was probably better than the ones I had with the other ones. And they had been there right after nationals instead of coming late or something like that. So I relationship and they, they really spoke about the development they would do for me as a player. And that was pretty important to me. And the coach herself had been there and done that. So it's pretty, it's, Nice to see that uh, she knows what it takes. I presume you're talking about going JUCO and then D1, or are you talking uh, about UM, something? Been, been there, done that. When you said your coach, coach had been there, had done that, I'm right. just trying to think what you oh, meant okay. by that. Yeah, she's been to the Final Four as a player, and then uh, she's been to bigger places. Not bigger, but <laughs> but big places as a coach as well. We got to say you ha you haven't even set foot on the campus yet. Yeah. You're already knocking them, Elena. Come on. No. <laughs> okay, that's what you meant. Final four appearance, uh, right? Um, which is a pretty distinguished honor, as uh, one of your fellow teammates uh, can attest to. Okay, well, thanks for explaining that. And yeah. so, what excites you? Of course, I don't know where your journey ends because with the changes in rules concerning. Division One athletes, there's a lot more autonomy now than there used to be. But whatever your path looks like, what are you most excited about as you'll set foot on the UMKC campus and hopefully next season get the opportunity to play Division One women's basketball? Yeah. Um, I think, honestly... Uh I would, I'm just pretty excited to play basketball, honestly, as um, I would always love to, yeah, I don't know, probably just play basketball, really. <laughs> I can understand that. I mean, yeah. that, that is uh, what you've signed up for. That was your goal before the injury and afterward. That's a perfectly acceptable answer. What do you plan on studying? Well, I... You already have one year of studies under your belt, but what are you looking at in terms of career options, whether or not it involves basketball? What are you studying, and where do you hope it will lead you? Um, I just did generals at Cochise, but um, I'm looking into maybe entrepreneurship or uh, physical science, and those are two things that are probably pretty high on my list, but I'm still undecided. Well, the best part about that, Elena, is there are no wrong answers and there's yeah. no time limit. So if you want to make a change, you are more than welcome to. But I think your journey and the challenges, the difficulties and the rewards that come with it. For you and a lot of others who grew up in the Hopkins program, I don't want to say it hit home, but you were working your way back from injury and then. Last summer, we get news about Paige and 
right. her injury, I imagine there's a sense of surrealism there. I know Paige had worked through some injuries before, but to find out one of your teammates, I remember when you and the other Hopkins players came on, I asked who was the toughest player to go against. Everyone said Paige, but I also got to see that sense of connection when she was there and the respect she had for everyone and how much you respected her. So following that ordeal when everyone found out, oh, now she's out. And by that point, she is one of the most recognizable names yeah. in college basketball. Was there anything from your experience that you were able to use in case maybe she reached out to you or if you reached out to her, just something that you picked up that, if I'm making sense, helped Paige, I imagine, go through the same process, the same recovery window that you did. Um, yeah, I, we both reached out to each other because we both know what it's like to go through something like that. Uh, um, I think it's pretty, pretty hopeful to see her uh, recover and for her to even have her injury and still play at the Final Four. So seeing something like that was probably got my mind right. That's right. She had that kneecap, I think, injury. And then over the summer, Tori Seal playing a pickup game. And I think it's a reminder that you just never know. Crazy things happen. Yeah. You could be doing everything right and something still goes wrong and it's nobody's fault. But what did you think when Paige tagged you? Because I saw she uh, gave you a plug on her Instagram story and your dad was telling me your phone was blowing up after that because Paige is a million followers. So whatever she does, viewers will notice, but to see her give you that nod and she's done that, I think for all of her teammates yeah. in AAU and high school. I know the two of you have been, to friends for a long time, I imagine, but to see that, to see someone of her level giving you a nod that, hey, you're going to get a chance to play D1 too, how cool was that? Uh, I mean, this sounds pretty cliche, but <laughs> like uh, it's bigger than basketball. And um, I think the relationship that all of us had built at Hawkins the, the couple of years was was pretty strong. So, Would you want to try going against her this next season. <laughs> if UMKC and UConn, should they meet in the tournament, I think that's right. the only way it would happen. How confident would you feel about taking her on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a pretty big question. <laughs> uh, pretty confident. <laughs> I like that answer. Yeah. <laughs> I like that answer. <laughs> Having a little fun, of course, like you said, it's bigger than basketball. Yeah. What advice or feedback would you offer, having gone through this yourself, sitting out for a year? I don't think anyone wants to see their senior year end prematurely, but to miss that, work your way back, go to the JUCO route to build up the ground game and have that turn into a, a Division One opportunity. It's something that a lot of athletes have gone through and you won't be the first or the last one, but based on your experience, what advice, feedback, tips would you offer to anyone out there who might be going through what you did? And whether it happens in your senior year, freshman year, wherever, what have you learned from your experience that you would like to pass along to others? Um, I would say the biggest thing is probably to just not compare your, your journey and yourself to others because... Uh, as long as you do things the right way, everything will work out. I have a couple more things. Following up on the last time we appeared together in this podcast, Elena, I hear you're still the best when it comes to fishing. Is that still true or that <laughs> you, you, you've got a leg up on Amaya and some of the others? Um, I'd like to think so. I, I would say Amaya would disagree, but... <laughs> I was going to say, Arizona, being a desert climate, I don't think yeah, you could do a whole lot of fishing. Yeah, I didn't even see a whole lot of bodies of water. So, <laughs> so I, Kansas City, I, it, like, I imagine you're going to be excited to take that up again when you get a free time, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. I'll bring you're my fishing You're bringing your fishing, pole. You're yeah. your fishing <laughs> pole, all of that. And I know we've talked about some of your teammates as well, but 
how cool is it to see the underclassmen that you played with? Nunu is going to Stanford. Taylor Woodson's going to Michigan. Liv McGill is heading to Florida. To see all of these athletes you played alongside with, and of course Maya and Amaya, Arizona and Minnesota, respectively. What do you think when you reflect on the fact that you're a part of that pipeline, that legacy at Hopkins that produces a lot of high-level athletes? Yeah, I would say, um, obviously, when I was with them at the moment, I didn't really understand. I was playing with, like, a future Stanford or a future gopher, but... Uh, I don't think, I think anyone actively does that, right. Elena. You probably, <laughs> that was probably the farthest thing from yeah, your mind. Yeah, for sure. And furthest, farthest, how are you phrasing? <laughs> I, I can't see you sizing up Nunu and be like, yeah, she looks like a Stanford kid. Right. But I, 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 what I was implying is you and everyone else, you all played a part in that story. And so to see all of your ride-or-die teammates get their opportunity now the way you are just what does that mean for you and what do you think that means for all the work and investment that was put into the program to make this possible yeah i mean that was pretty cool because obviously we had we had been through tough practices together just so to see that uh everyone had made it to the next level is, is pretty cool to see and is there anything else you'd like to add in this next leg of your journey i know you'll be making the trek to UMKC in a few right. weeks, but what fascinates you, what excites you, and what are you anticipating when it comes to new lessons learned, new environments, things you maybe hadn't considered before? Anything you'd like to add? Um, not that I can think of. Just ready to uh, play at the next level. Play at the next level, get that fishing game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because Amaya's had, I would think she's had a year. Well, maybe not in the snow, but Amaya's had a year to catch up to you. So I know. <laughs> you, you, you've got a reputation to defend. <laughs> well, Elena, I know I'm looking forward to hearing about all the new ways you can score now. <laughs> and not that you didn't have multiple ways before. Yeah. Just, I remember again, when I look back at some of the highlights from those years. Like, there's Elena, we're at the three-point line, ready to fire away. Yeah. <laughs> everyone had their roles, but it was really cool to see everyone embrace it. And I think what really helped Hopkins in those years, and I think it spread to yourself and everyone else now that you're all making an impact at the Division One level, I never once saw Ego get in the way, even when Paige was all the rage and everyone wanted to get a piece of her uh, it really was a group where the sum was greater than their parts. And now you, you aren't all on the same team anymore. Everyone is scattered about, but it's really cool to see that you're going to get that chance. Maybe it came a little later than everyone else, but I know I'm excited. I'm touched to see that you're going to get a chance to show everyone what you're capable of. And I can't wait to see what that looks like. Yeah, thank you. Well, Elena, best of luck to you at UMKC and wherever you go. And maybe in a few years, we'll revisit this. And once you've mastered your new scoring techniques, I, I'd like to think <laughs> you can elevate for a dunk at some point, right? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, I'm getting close. I'm getting close. Getting close. Well, that's a good, that's good progress, yeah. right? <laughs> One inch closer every day. I, yeah. I tease, of course. More to it than dunking, but I am excited to see what the future looks like for you. And you'll get a chance to well, either connect or reconnect with a fellow Minnesota athlete and to me a Ugis, so there'll be a little piece of home mm -hmm. uh, awaiting you. But I know I, would, I heard a lot about your journey from your dad in particular and how proud he was to see you sticking it out and all the lessons he learned from your perseverance. So best of luck again, Elena. And I hope you saved a few threes for UMKC because I think they could use them. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Elena Contreras, you can find her hopefully 
on the court with the Ruse at UMKC in the Summit League. And I almost forgot to, you're going to be in the Summit League, so you'll get to come up here, I think, once with St. Thomas. I think so, yeah. So yeah. all the people, all your family who couldn't watch you in Arizona, I can see it now, Elena. You might have a packed uh, fan section Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they make the trek up here. So we'll see what happens, but uh, you better be ready, Elena. I think a lot of people who have been waiting to cheer you on are finally going to get that chance, so they, they might bring a party. <laughs> That's fine with me. <laughs> Party on. <laughs> but again, Elena Contreras, you can find her hooping it up in the Summit League at UMKC next season. And if you have a story you'd like to share or one that you would like to continue, we're always happy to create an opportunity, a platform for you. Just hit us up on social media at the Mike Peden. If you have a good story, we want to share it. So until next time, thanks for watching.